So good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us and welcome to the first session of Elastoplast's free webinar series. This is an eight week series presented by a variety of industry leaders and health professionals around taping and movement. Uh, this has been put together very much like many things right now with the global pandemic going on at the last minute. So I wanted to say thanks to the Elastoplast sports team for putting this together in such a short time frame. Uh, we've been testing technology and trying different things and I think we've got several hundred if not a thousand people connected to us right now uh, listening to this through the Zoom platform. So thank you very much for getting up your evening. Thanks very much for joining us. Hopefully we can give you some helpful tips and information to keep you well and keep you healthy through this crisis. My name is Paul Herman. I'm an osteopath and exercise scientist and I'm the national presenter for Elastoplast. Um, I work in Melbourne at our two clinics at Stay Tuned Sports Medicine. We've got a clinic in Aronia and a clinic in Elwood. And I work both as an osteopath and exercise scientist. I've also been a lecturer through Australia and overseas. So my goal tonight is to teach you some basic rules, some tips around posture and how to look after yourself. There's so many people now working from home on questionable setups with our home-based environments. So I want to give you some ideas around how to make those setups as best as possible, but also how to keep yourself moving throughout the day, how to try and prevent the stiffness and soreness that comes from sitting for prolonged periods in possibly less than ideal postures. So that's tonight's goal. We're going to talk about what I call desk disease or managing desk disease. We're going to talk about our ergonomic setup or our desk setup, and then we're going to do some mobility and some stretches. Uh, that you can take away and try throughout your days to keep yourself active. The next time we uh, come together with myself will be on the 30th of April, and we'll talk about some strengthening in those uh, in that session, some strengthening for your core, some postural strengthening, and we'll do some taping in that one. Now, before we get started, we have a little bit of housekeeping to do. Um, we have two Elastoplast representatives controlling today's session, and if you have any questions at all, please put them into the chat forum. Uh, because we have so many people in this session, everyone will stay on mute and will stay on the chat. And then these gentlemen will select questions that they put forward to me. And I'll answer as many questions as possible at the end of the session. But of course, with this many people, it is impossible to get through every one of your questions. So I apologize in advance that we can't get to every single question, but we will certainly get to as many as possible. It'll be less than ideal in a, when we sit, sit in front of, say, the kitchen table, or if we're working from the couch, or if we're working from a home desk, far less ideal than when we're set up at our workplace. The most common thing I see in my clinics as an osteopath that presents from these, well associated to these, is headaches, neck pain and stiffness, and lower back pain. Those three are probably the most common things that I see that seem to have a pretty strong correlation to desk setup or posture at our desk. Um, a lot of people are, as I say, now working from home and are scrambling to try and find the best setup they can. So we're going to talk about that a little bit. First of all, what we're going to talk about is when we're sitting, and hopefully you can see my, the shape of my spine here. I'll pull my shirt a little bit so you can do so. Uh, we want to make sure that our hips are at the same height as our knees or slightly higher. If we were to go into a position where the knees are higher than the hips, it makes it really hard to maintain your lumbar or lower back posture. So again, if the knees are too high, your back wants to slouch. It wants to round. And that's not an ideal posture for us at all for a variety of reasons. So we would like to see the knees at or slightly lower than the hips. The other thing is we wanna make sure that our arms are by our side when we're working. There's no point the arms being forward because then your neck and shoulder region, the muscles up through here, have to maintain or support the whole weight of your arms. This reach position is only for things that we go to infrequently. But for all the things that we frequently use, such as our keyboard and mouse, we want to keep them reasonably close so our elbows are by our side. We want to keep the mouse in position where we can just turn. I'll go this way so you can see. So we can just move our hand slightly to the mouse, but that everything we use most commonly, keyboard and mouse particularly, are in this close reach position. And again, ideally around that 90 degree. We don't want to be up like this, typing away, and we certainly don't want to be down like this because that will encourage, again, the rounded posture. Now, the most common thing that we change or alter when we go into companies and we do ergonomic setup uh, assessments is the monitor height. I can't stress this enough because personally, I think it's probably the greatest influencing factor on sitting posture. 
If I was to go side on here and my monitor height, as you can see where my hand is, was up here, I tend to look up and maintain a reasonably upright posture. So this is a reasonably good posture and I can be typing away, looking at either one screen, two screen, whatever you've got. But we need our monitor height for me at around about here. On your monitor, it's not just the height of the monitor, because these days the monitors are quite big. It's where most of your attention on your monitor lies. So if you're putting most of your attention to the bottom of the monitor, then that's what needs to be at eye height. So your monitor might be quite high. If most of your attention on your monitor or screen is towards the top of the screen, then that's what needs to be at your eye height. So again, sitting up as tall as you can, sitting up in great posture, your knees slightly underneath your hips. We want that attention on the screen to be around eye level. If, for example, that lowers down, what will happen is my eyes will lower and my back, as you can see, will want to sag. It's almost impossible to have this kind of rounded, slouched posture, as we call it, and to look up at a monitor. Your back just doesn't like it, and nor does your neck. So what you'll tend to do if the monitor's up there is you'll tend to lift your posture up. If the monitor is already set up there, it's again, it's hard to be there and slouch your back. You just want to naturally be taller. So the number one thing we tell patients, and when we were going out and doing these ergonomic assessments, the number one piece of advice was get yourself a separate keyboard and mouse. You can go to Officeworks or JB Hi-Fi or wherever else. These days, right where we are now, we probably need to go online and order them, but I'm sure you can do that. And you'll have those delivered in no time at all. And they're reasonably cheap to get a separate keyboard and mouse. What that enables you to do, particularly if you're working on a laptop, is to pop the laptop screen up on some phone books, shoe boxes, something you've got around. So again, that monitor can be up high. If you're working on a laptop and you've got your elbows by your side and you've got your hands here close, then that monitor is going to be right there. And guess what you're going to be doing? Down like this. And you know, this is really good for our clinical business, but not so good for your neck or back. So we want to get that separate keyboard or mouse and be able to pop that laptop up at this eye level so you can be happily typing away here. These are the things that will give you uh, we don't like to call them good or bad posture, but an ideal posture when working from home or working from any desk anywhere, to be honest. But even in good posture, we still get, are still not designed to sit for that long. So if you're sitting for a long period of time, we're just not made that way. We're made to move. We're made to be dynamic. We're not made to just sit and load. Particularly when we're in this position, we get what's called axial load. So we get load going down through our spine, compressing us over a period of time. And I don't know about you, but I find it very hard to sit up tall for any length of time, even with good ergonomics and good setup. You tend to kind of you know, drop down. I've seen people tuck their foot underneath their bum or sit with their legs crossed doing this kind of stuff. And you know, I'm sure we're all guilty of it. But that's because we don't want to be in this position for a long period of time. We want to alter our posture. And that's how we're made. We're made to be dynamic. We're made to move. So again, even in really good posture, we want to get up as often as possible. Now, I was talking to a patient about this today and saying the, the reason that they were getting a lot of compression or what we believe was one of the reasons they were getting a lot of compression was they spent a lot of time sitting. So they had this axial load. But then their mechanism to get up and move, which is great, was to go for a walk around the house. But when we're standing, we're still getting axial load. Now, it's definitely better than prolonged sitting. So getting up and doing anything is better than prolonged sitting. Break up that sitting, ideally every 20 minutes. Um, at the very minimum, every hour, get up and get moving. But this patient was saying that they, their mechanism, again, to break it up, was to go for a walk just around their house. And they found that over days and days, they were getting stiffer and stiffer and stiffer, particularly through their lower back and their neck. As I explained to them, the problem with that being, we've got axial loading when we're sitting, then when we stand and walk, we still have that axial load. So what our body loves is when we change posture, when we go into like an all fours position, or when we lay down. Um, swimming is the perfect example because we get this nice opposing corkscrew motion through the spine when we're doing freestyle or backstroke, for example. And it's altering our posture from being this long loaded axial compression position to just a different postural position. So my point is I encourage you, when you do get up and take a break, sure, 
walk around the house, go and get yourself a glass of water. If you've got a balcony or a terrace or something like that, go and get some fresh air. Or if it's your opportunity to go for exercise throughout the day, get outside and go for a walk. But also when you get up, start to get into different positions and move. You know, dance around your kitchen. Do something different so that your body moves in a sideways motion and in a rotational motion. Don't just move in an up and down motion. So we're going to move now on to some exercises to demonstrate that and give you some ideas. And I'm going to show you each exercise in a seated version and then in an altered posture version. The first one I want to talk about is an exercise called the bow and arrow. So you all get to be Robin Hood here. And if you want, if you're playing at home, give this a shot while you're sitting there and watching this Zoom presentation. So I'll go side on to show you. You pretend you're Robin Hood and you pull the bow, pull the arrow, I should say, I'll pull the bow and arrow and let go. And then you do the same with the opposite arm. So we end up with this two-way rotation. You'll note that my eyes and my head are still looking forward. And I'll turn our front on to show you in this way. So we're gonna pull back and we're gonna get this rotation. And as you can see, hopefully, as I'm pulling back, it's not just pulling the hand into the trunk or into the shoulder. I'm really rotating my mid back whilst looking down the line of my left arm in this case. So again, I'm gonna pull back and rotate my mid back, keeping my head staying forward, and then do the same the other side. When you start to do this slowly, you'll even note which way you rotate more easily. You might note that when you go to the right, your legs stay still and your body gets a pretty good rotation. But when you go to the left, everything wants to turn with it because maybe that's your stiff direction. Don't worry about that. We're all in balance. No human is balanced perfectly, but just be aware of it. And the side that feels a little bit stiffer, be gentle with it, but encourage it to continue increasing its mobility. So this is our bow and arrow. So again, we're gonna reach back, rotate our trunk below our head, keeping our eyes facing forward. The reason we get our eyes to face forward is because as I go like this, I'll do it this way, as I rotate there and keep my head forward, if I was to bring my body back, it's the same as having full neck rotation. So again, if I was to rotate like this, keep my head there and then bring my body back, it's the same as full neck rotation or cervical spine rotation. The difference is it's less stressful to the neck because we're using what's called a lower lever. So we're using our mid back to mobilize our neck, okay? So it's reasonably safe for the neck. As with all these exercises, as with anything you do, if it hurts, just stop. There's no point doing, there is no such thing as no pain gain, all that kind of stuff from the 90s. If it hurts, it's not good for you, don't do it. If it's slightly uncomfortable or stiff, that's okay. But if it's actually hurting, don't do it. So again, this is our bow and arrow. We get to Robin Hood in both directions, nice and slow and smooth within the range of motion that you're comfortable with. Now I'm gonna show you a kneeling version of this, one we call thread the needle. So we pop down onto our hands and knees. Hopefully you can all see me there pretty well. My hands are directly underneath my shoulders and my knees are directly underneath my hips. I'm not rounding my back up, I'm just keeping it nice and straight. And in this case, I'm going to reach my right arm all the way through underneath my left arm. And that's what's called threading the needle. And then I'm gonna take it up and I'm gonna reach up towards the roof. And I'm gonna repeat that several times on this side. So I hope you can see there, I'm reaching up towards the roof and see how I'm looking at this hand up here. So I'm getting a full neck and trunk rotation. Again, as far as that's comfortable. And then I'm reaching through as far as comfortable and I'm looking up. If you find when you're looking up like this that it's a bit sore on the neck, that's okay. Take your hand up, but just keep your head looking down. So again, we're gonna reach through and we're gonna look up. And in this case, I'm keeping my head facing down. Then you would place your hand on the ground and do the other way. Reach through the needle and up towards the roof. Reaching through, really bending that elbow, getting nice and close to the ground, and then reaching up towards the roof as high as possible. Okay, so that's our number one. Now that's thoracic rotation, or we're focusing there on rotation mobility. Um, again, it's a very different emotion to what we do when we're just sitting and typing and getting all this axial compression. Okay, the second one we're gonna do is what's called a uh, reach and round. So we're going to reach forward, round our upper back, and then we're gonna reach back 
and kind of elevate our chest, opening up through the front as if we're leaning back slightly. So we reach and round, and then we come back. So in this case, we're taking our spine and we're flexing and extending the spine. So we're moving it in this forward and backward motion. Reach and round, back and extend. Nice and slow. Again, same rule applies. If it hurts, don't do it. And only move through a range that you're comfortable with. Now the version of that on the ground, same thing, hands and knees. And what we do is we round our back up, sometimes referred to as a camel pose. And then we stick our bottom out and we look up just slightly. Don't hyperextend your neck and arch it too much or it's going to get sore. Again, only move through the range that you're comfortable with. The idea of these exercises, these mobility-based exercises, is that we gradually improve our range of motion or our mobility over time. You are not going to be a Cirque du Soleil gymnast by Tuesday. It's just not going to happen. So you've got to sort of coerce or gently edge away at mobility and slowly increase that over time. You cannot force it. If you force it, it's going, to, it's going to create some kind of injury or strain, and that's going to leave you with pain. So this is our cat and camel. Again, on hands and knees, rounding up, sticking our bottom out, and going through from flexion to extension. There's no kind of stopping point here. And with all these exercises, again, it's really important when work within our range is comfortable and continue breathing. Try not to hold your breath at any particular point in the exercise. Okay, moving on to our next one. So that's our flexion extension and our rotation. The next one I'm gonna do facing you, and this is what I call a metronome or the swaying tree. I'm sure with the, uh, well, the winds out there today, I've seen a few of these go on. So, apologize if you can't see the top of my hands, but you get there above my head and they're together. And then we're gonna lean each side as far as we possibly can, comfortably without pain. So we're going side to side, like a swaying tree or a metronome, in that manner. And I'll do it this way so you can see that I'm not going forward or backward, we're just going side to side. The kneeling or ground version of that is a reach, and we just move our hands from one side to the next. So again, we're doing that side to side motion that we were doing when we were sitting. That's called in some sort of circles, a child's pose reach. Okay, so that's got our rotation. It's got our side bending. It's got our flexion and extension. Yep, so we've got a, a lot of length and movement through our upper back. Now, if you're finding particularly you need a bit more uh, mobility and that mid back or upper back's quite stiff, that's when we can bring in our foam roller. And this is our elastoplast, beautiful red foam roller here. I'm gonna pop it on the ground so you can see. And what we do is we lay back on it on our mid back. Our feet are about shoulder width apart and lift the bottom up. Very important here to support your head so you're not stressing out those neck muscles. So my bottom's just up off the ground and all I'm gonna do, a bit like a rolling pin going up and down the dough, is we're gonna move over and above the foam roller, so it sort of massages up through that upper back. Okay, again, or as always, in a range that you're comfortable with, that's not causing you any pain. So there's our, our foam roller brought into use. Really, really effective at getting that mid-back mobile. Okay, so we've got some stretches to do now. That's our joint mobility. That's gonna get us moving in different planes than we're used to when we're sitting. But we still get muscular stiffness. Difference between mobility that is joint-based and flexibility where we're working on the muscles. So now we're gonna go into our flexibility or stretches. The first one is the stretch, one of my favorites, for the pectoralis minor muscle, which is a very small chest muscle. It goes from our upper ribs here into the, uh, the front of our shoulder blade or, or scapula. So we take our hands behind our back, we pull our shoulder blades together, sit up nice and tall, and you kind of reach down towards the ground. From here, a couple of deep breaths in and out to really expand those upper ribs, Three deep breaths, and that really helps oppose that rounding we often get when we're sitting. So that's our pec minor stretch. The pec major one, I'm gonna show you here on the side of the wall, 
as if I stand up, you won't be able to see me on the camera, so I apologize for that. We pop our hand up at the same height or slightly higher than the shoulder, and we rotate away until you feel a stretch right across the front of the shoulder and the chest there. This is for the pec major, the large chest muscle. And then of course, make sure you do the other side. Okay, a few more to go through. When we're sitting for a long period of time, our hips get really short. So we, the muscle at the front of our hips, our hip flexors get really short. So I love a good old fashioned quad stretch. Now again, I'm gonna do this kneeling, but you can do this standing. This is where you pull your foot towards your bottom and you push your hip forward to get that hip flexor component to the muscle. It's one of our quads and there's a couple of other hip flexor muscles in there, but it's important to get as long and as straight through here so we can really feel that in the front of the hip. Again, you can do this standing. I'm just kneeling because this is the way we have the camera set up tonight so that you can still see me. So this is our quadricep or thigh muscle and our hip flexor stretch. Okay, a couple more of my favorites. The good old glutes. I love this because you can do this almost anywhere. I give this to my patients who are traveling a lot, who happen to have to sit a lot. You can do this stretch even in an airplane or bus or tram. Not that we're on those things at the moment, but hey, when we do get back to that, it'll be great. Cross one leg over the other leg, grab this knee and give it a good hug. Bring it up towards the opposite shoulder. Use your hands if you're finding that's quite stiff and if you're reasonably flexible, you can wrap your arm around and give it a good hug. It's one of the few things you're allowed to hug right now. So give that knee a hug and bring it up to your opposite shoulder and you should feel that stretch down through the back and outside of your hip in the gluteal region. With all these stretches, the ideal time is around 15 to 30 seconds. Never pull too hard, stop if it hurts of course, and continue breathing throughout. And always try and do both sides. We give that a good hug up towards the opposite shoulder. The second gluteal stretch is we do the same thing, but this time we pop our foot on our opposite knee and we let the opposite, this, sorry, this knee drop down. So we're giving that a little bit of a push and sitting up as tall as we can there. This is for our piriformis. Same thing on the other side and stretching through there. Now I'm just mindful we're running out of time, so we might have to move to some questions. Let's see what we've got. Oh no, it's time for you guys to start asking them. So I'm gonna finish up on our last few stretches and exercises while you guys can shoot some questions through to our fantastic admin team. Okay, so the last the thing I wanted to talk about is an exercise called Brugger's. Now Brugger was a Norwegian neurologist, came up with this exercise for a condition called T4 syndrome, but it works really well as a postural break. Now Brugger's is, we do this, you can do it sitting. You place your hands down by your side, turning your palms forward. You pull your fingers apart from each other reasonably intensely, and you make sure you're up really tall. So we're elevating that sternum or chest bone. Fingers pulled apart and squeezing our shoulder blades back together. And then we take as deep a breath in as possible. Really expanding the ribs, filling the lungs up as much as possible. And then you breathe every single last bit of air all the way out of your lungs, squeezing your tummy muscles so that you can squeeze all that air out. And you repeat this for three breaths. So three deep breaths in, as big as you can, still pulling those fingers apart, still turning those arms out to the side. And then you squeeze every last last bit of air out. When you squeeze the air out, make sure you don't drop your posture. So we're getting all that air out using our abdominal muscles, but we're not failing our posture or slouching our posture. So again, it's called Brugger's. You can check it out online um, and it's a, it's a postural break exercise or it's an exercise for a syndrome that would turn into a postural break. Okay, last two things I wanted to talk about. We're not going to keep you too long tonight. I want to encourage you to participate in what's called the 60-60 challenge. 60-60 challenge is a very basic concept. Every 60 minutes, do something for 60 seconds that isn't sitting. And I don't care, get up and dance. Do your cat and cow exercise or your cat and camel exercise. Do your thread the needle. Uh, go for a walk. Do your glute stretches. Do something different if you like every hour, but for 60 seconds, at least every 60 minutes, do something that isn't sitting down and work. 
It will help refresh your mind. It will help get your body moving again. It will help release some of those tension, some of the tension that's in your body, and it will keep you as healthy and mobile as possible as we unfortunately go through this uh, global pandemic. So other things that are really helpful, fresh air. If you've got a balcony, a terrace, backyard, get out there and get some fresh air as often as you can. Again, go for your daily walks when you can, get up and dance, do a bit of online yoga, whatever you can to get moving. So now let's have a look at these questions and see what we can answer for you. Oh, we've got a few. Okay, what are your recommendations for up-down desks? We've got up-down desks, good stretches for wrists and hands. Okay, we'll answer a few of these as we can go. So, uh, my recommendations for up-down desks or sit-to-stand desks is get one. They are fantastic. A while ago, when we started telling patients to get these, they were around three, three and a half thousand dollars. They're quite expensive. Now you can even go to Officeworks, and look, I'm not affiliated with any brand whatsoever, but you can go online, you can go to Officeworks, you can go to a variety of different places, and you can get these additions that just go on your normal desk. And they have two little levers on the side, and they go from a sitting desk straight up to a standing desk. Our receptionists have them in the um, waiting rooms, and they're fantastic because they can be sitting, and then they can stand up, work for a while standing. If they need to, they get tired and they want to sit for five minutes, they can just pop it straight back down. So they're really good if you don't have the opportunity to uh, create a whole new desk. They're quite great at just putting on top of your existing kitchen table in this circumstance or normal desk. And they are as low as $150 to $200. So they're a great investment. Second question I remember was stretches for the wrists and forearms. Being on a, a mouse and keyboard a lot, we do get a lot of tension through the back of our forearms. Uh, increased tension over a period of time can lead to conditions such as tennis or golfer's elbow. But uh, even if you don't get to that clinical condition, it can just be uncomfortable that we create a lot of this tension through these muscles. Two things, the flexor, so the, um, the extensor stretch we like here, which is pulling our hand down, I'll show you side on. So we pull the hand down and try and turn the elbow out. And this will give you a nice stretch all the way up the back of the forearm. In the same position, you simply rotate your hand the other direction and pull the fingers down to stretch through the flexor component of our forearm. The second part of this is unfortunately with most mouses, mouses, mice, where our palm is facing down, so we're moving our wrist in this kind of deviation manner. And it's not really designed for that. It's designed to move in this flexion extension manner. So again, you can go online, you can get what's called an upright mouse. I've seen them online for as little as $30. You can pay up to 200, but as little as $30. And it takes your wrist from this rather uncomfortable rotated down position to a neutral upright position as if you're gonna shake hands with someone. And then your movement is flexion extension. I've tried them myself uh, and they literally, within a few days, you get very used to it. It's just like you would be on a normal mouse, but it's far better for the wrist and far more comfortable and helps prevent a lot of wrist problems. Okay, what other questions have we got? Should you use the backrest in the chair or does that encourage bad posture? Uh, thanks, Caden, that's a fantastic question. Some chairs have a really good lumbar lordosis support. So the chair has this natural curve on it which helps support our, our lower back. So it's really important when we sit in our chair, as you can see I'm doing now, to put our bottom all the way back into the chair so that back support is holding us upright. There is a, a, a thought around this that we don't want to sit back onto the, the rest of the chair, uh, sorry, to the back rest of the chair, if that makes us in this position. So we don't want to use the chair as a complete um, brace or a complete hold. We want it to support us or to encourage this postural position, this curve in our lower back. Now, if you're at home and you're on a kitchen dining table, for example, a dining chair, sorry, and it's got a straight back, what you can do is you can roll up a towel and put that through there. Put that into your lower back, just above your waist or your short line, uh, above your jeans or track your pants probably, um, pop it on through there and that'll keep your back in that supported lordosis or curved position. That's if your chair doesn't have that nice lordotic curve. Hope that answers your question. So we do like using the backrest, but not if you're sitting back against it and it's basically just slouching. All right, let's see what other questions we've got. Excuse me for having to come in and out from the, uh, the screen here. Uh, thanks, Nadine. Yes, I also agree. The upright, rouse, the upright mouse is really good. Uh, 
Yeah, there was a great comment here around the sit to stand desk. Um, it is important, but just because you get a sit to stand desk doesn't mean you have to be standing all the time. Again, what I mentioned before around our bodies being really liking um, dynamic motion applies to standing as well. We don't want to be stuck standing all the time. So changing posture is the key. So it's really great, like I mentioned with our admin team, to stand at the desk. I want to get a bit tired, sit for five minutes. It's more than okay. And then stand back up and then swap it from sitting to standing. That's the beauty of these desks is you can change posture regularly from a sitting and standing position. Now there's a few questions there around neck stretches. Um, I particularly like a lateral neck stretch. What I do find, the reason I hesitate on answering this is most of the time, this is probably important to go through, it'll be quite helpful, that we get this tension through the back and the side of our neck. And this leads up into the base of our skull and can, if it continue, lead to causing headaches. So this compression or this tightness that comes through these levator scap and upper trap muscles, and the posterior or back muscles of the neck, is usually as a result of our posture being in this or our head being forward. Your head weighs between six and eight kilos. And unless it sits on your spine, your neck muscles have to hold you up. And there's a thing called text neck. We refer to it as we're looking down while we're texting um, on our uh, smartphones. So the, the reason that explains it is when our heads go forward, the further forward they go, the more these muscles at the back of our neck have to work to hold that six to eight kilo ball up. If your posture is upright and your head is above your spine, those muscles are actually quite loose. They're not active, so they're not gonna get as tense. So it's really helpful to do some neck stretches, which I'll show you, but it's even more helpful to prevent them being tight in the first place. Otherwise, you're just gonna be stretching and going around this cycle of tight neck, stretch it off, tight neck, stretch it off. But if you can get that monitor up and if you can sit yourself up tall and have a neck in a neutral position, you'll find those muscles won't get as tight. Now as for which neck stretches I like, I really like stretching out the side of the neck, the scalene muscles. So you sit up as tall as you can and you simply let your ear fall towards your shoulder. If you need an extra motion or extra um, stretch on the side here, take that hand and gently, gently reach it down towards the ground. So I'm reaching my left hand down as my right ear is going towards my right shoulder. So the first motion is head directly to the side. The second motion, if you need it, is to reach that left hand down to get that nice stretch down the side. Now be gentle with these. It's really important with these we're careful because we have a whole nerve bundle that comes down through the side of the neck, travels down through our arm. And so it's called the brachial plexus. So if you do it quickly or if you overstretch, you may actually damage that nerve bundle. So do be gentle. But again, I'll go the other way now, taking the left ear down through the shoulder. And if you need a slight increase in a stretch, reach that right hand towards the ground. That's my favorite neck stretch. Okay, oh goodness, the questions are coming through. Um, okay, before we lose a lot of you, because I know the time's getting on, I just wanna remind you, this is a series of webinars and there's a, fa a great list of really great presenters who are gonna be running each week. Um, the next one we've got, is on Tuesday with James Rami, who's a physiotherapist. And James will be talking about taping of the knee and knee injury management. Um, so definitely log on and tune in for that one. Um, what else have we got going on? One of my favorite three stretches for massage therapists, for rugby players. Um, how do you prevent upper cross syndrome? Okay, I'll try and combine a few of these questions into one answer. My favorite, well, I'll tell it this way. I can answer this in terms of anecdotal evidence of the patients that are presented to me. And I've been doing this, our Baronia clinic, our state in sports medicine in Baronia has been running nearly 20 years, August will be 20 years. So I've been in the fitness industry and the health industry now for nearly 20 years. And what presents to me most commonly, or the, the stretches I give most commonly, are those pec stretches, pec minor, up against the, the door frame or the corner here for pec major, and the two glute exercise, glute stretches. They're probably my four stretches that I give the most commonly based on the most common presentations of my patients over the last 20 years. 
Uh, I should say that correlates to where most people get stiff. Again, we get this rounded posture, so stretching those chest muscles and trying to prevent them from pulling us further around is really important. We sit too much and we tend to get a shortness and tightness through our glutes. So giving them a good stretch is another really good one. That's my favorite. If, if we all did those very regularly, what I think personally, just my opinion, we'd probably have a lot less problems. Okay. Hey guys, the last plus admin have just said, feel free to send any unanswered questions through to the email that you received on the registration link. And we'll do our very best over the next few days to answer as many of them as possible. Uh, my thoughts on quality respiration mechanics, very, very important. I think we've got to most of them. So my last point here is around respiratory mechanics and upper cross thoracic syndrome, which are two separate questions that we put in together into one answer. Respiratory mechanics talks about diaphragmatic breathing. So those of you who have done um, any work with yoga uh, or Pilates, will know a bit about using your diaphragm, or if you've been a musician or a singer, you'll know a bit about using your diaphragm to breathe. When we breathe with what's called the upper respiratory mechanism, we tend to get a lot of tension in our upper area, our neck, upper chest, upper back. When we can breathe using our tummy muscles and that lower diaphragmatic breath, we utilize the big diaphragm muscle as opposed to these small accessory respiratory muscles. These are the ones that are supposed to help us out when we're running and we need a lot of extra breath. So I would encourage you whenever possible, pop your hands on your tummy, practice breathing through your diaphragm and that belly breath. Um, it will do you wonderful things and it will take some of the tension out of your neck. Some of that tension also comes from this rounded posture, which is commonly associated or referred to as this upper cross thoracic syndrome. Um, it's not quite that simple, but the upper cross thoracic is basically kind of like a rounded posture where our pecs get really short and they come into this cross and our upper back muscles tend to get a bit long and sometimes a bit weak. Again, the key is remove the cause. If the cause is that low monitor or laptop, doesn't matter how many stretches and exercises you do because you're back onto that posture for many, many hours every day. So get that monitor up, get the separate keyboard and mouse, do your pec stretches and prevent the problem occurring in the first place. Prevention is always better than cure. I think we're just about done. I'm probably out of time there for you all. So yes, we'll pass it on there. Thank you so much for everyone for joining me. Again, next time we're gonna talk about some self-taping exercise, self-taping techniques for our upper back. That's with me on the 30th of April. We're gonna be using the Elastoplast Kinesio tape in that one. We're gonna be using the Elastoplast resistance band in that one too, doing some strength exercises. Um, and next Tuesday again, uh, with, with James, we'll be talking about knee and taping up of the knee. So hopefully check out the series on either LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, um, go to the Elastoplast website or Elastoplast on social media and you'll be able to find all the details of the upcoming talks. And I think we are done. So thank you very much to everyone for joining us and uh, please have a good night, stay well and uh, stay tuned. All right, take care.